Hi, this is section 7.5 called Solving Special Types of Linear Systems and we're on page 459. Uh, today it's Dr. Martin Luther King Day. I'm making this video. It's about 9.20 on Monday morning. Some of you might not even be up yet because you don't have school today. This might be a great way. You might want to put this in your notes. This might be a great way to, for me to start my video audit over this. What day did I make this video? Just to make sure you're paying attention. All right. So what does it mean to solve special types of linear systems? What does that title mean? When you solve a linear system, one of three things can happen. We could get one solution. This is what we've been working on for all of chapter 7 so far. Remember at the beginning of the chapter, I said there was a, a term I had you put in your notes. It was called um, consistent, consistent independent systems. And what consistent independent systems meant is we were working on problems in, at the beginning, the first half of chapter 7, where each time we solved our system, we only got one ordered pair that would work. Okay, that's what a consistent independent system means. That's what we worked on in the first half of chapter. Now, there are other things that can happen, and that's what this section's about. What other things can happen when we solve a system? It's possible to have things other than just one answer. Here are the other two things that could happen. We could get no solution, or we could get infinitely many solutions. We're going to focus more on these two situations in, in Section 7.5. So what we've learned up to this point isn't going away. We're still going to solve systems that will only have one solution. We're just going to learn today when could we get no solution and when could we get infinitely many. Now, we can solve systems by graphing. And you might want to turn to the top of page 462. And we learned this, remember, in section 7.1. In section 7.1, we learned how to solve a system by graphing. Now, when we solve a system by graphing, one of three things can happen. We could get one solution. That's what we practiced at the, the first section of 7.1. I had you graph two lines. They always intersected at a point. They gave you one solution. Okay? However, there's other things that could happen. Think about this. Could, is it possible to graph two lines and have the lines be parallel? Which means they don't intersect. Like you see at the top of page 462 in the middle picture. If you graph two lines as you're trying to solve your system and you find out that they don't intersect because they're parallel, that's a situation where you get no solution. And then finally, you could graph each line and find out that the first line when you graph it is the same thing as the second line you graph. In other words, when you graph the two lines, they're one on top of the other. If that happens, if you have two lines that are the same, that's when you have infinitely many solutions. Okay, that means that each of the lines have the same slope and same y-intercept. All right? You can actually tell how many solutions you have without even graphing. If you write both equations in slope-intercept form, you can tell if you have one solution, no solutions, or infin infinitely many. If the equations have different slopes, you get one solution. If the slopes are the same but the y-intercepts are different, then you get no solutions. And then there's one more scenario, next page. I'll go through these one more time with you. In slope-intercept form, if the slopes and y-intercepts are the same, you get infinitely many solutions. So let's quick, let me just quickly diagram those for you so we can think about it, because I just gave you in the last 30 seconds a lot to think about. Okay, so let's just think for a minute. Let's say that I had two lines, and they have different slopes. I'm just going to make up something here. In fact, I'll even give them the same y-intercept. There's two lines, different slopes, same y-intercept. Well, here's the thing. Think about it. If the slope, if the y-intercept is 5, the slope of this line is positive, which means it's going, well, it's not drawn very well. Try that again. The slope of this line is going uphill. The slope of this line is different. If the lines have different slopes, doesn't that mean that the lines will eventually have to touch each other? Think about that. If the lines aren't, uh, have a different slope, if the rate of change isn't the same, they're not parallel. That means they're eventually going to touch. So that's why in the previous slide, as I'm reading through this quick, okay, 
if you have two lines in slope intercept form, if you write them both in slope intercept form, if you see different slopes, you immediately know that you can only have one solution. Okay? Now, what if you have the same slope? Let's think about the same slope. Okay, so I'm going to do the same slope this time. Now, if the, sa if the slopes are the same, one of two things are happening. And then you've got to look at the y-intercepts. If the slopes are the same, but the y-intercepts are different, like here, here's 8, here's 5, if the slopes are the same, well, then you know you have two lines that are parallel, and these two lines will never intersect. This would be no solution. Slopes are the same, but the y-intercepts are different. I get parallel lines. If the slopes are the same, but the y-intercepts are also the same, that means you just have one line, one drawn on top of the other. This is where you'd have infinitely many solutions. So I hope walking through that and drawing a picture as I walk through it made sense. If the slopes are different, you must only have one solution because the lines are going to intersect somewhere. If the slopes are the same, but the y-intercepts are different, let me put different, that means I have two different lines, they're parallel. If the slopes are the same and the y-intercepts are the same, we're talking about the same line, that's infinitely many solutions, okay? So that's how you can tell without even, without even graphing if you have one solution, no solutions, or infinitely many. Now, how can we tell by using substitution and elimination? Okay, how can you tell if we have no solution, one solution, or infinitely many? using one of these methods that we learned in 7.2, 7.3, and 7.4. Well, again, it's pretty simple. You just work out the problem as normal. As you are working it out, however, if all the variables disappear as you're eliminating or substituting and, you get, and you're left with a true statement, that's when you have infinitely many solutions. If you get a false statement, then you have no solutions. I worked out an example here. I, I did question number 16. And 16, here are the directions. In problem 16, it says, solve the system by using substitution or elimination. They're giving me a choice. And remember, we've used two different methods, and there's a reason for that. It's kind of like, you know, being a mechanic in a toolbox. Different tools do different things better than other things. Same thing here. When you have substitution and elimination, some problems are less work to substitute some problems are less work to eliminate. So when I looked at number 16, and I noticed immediately in the second equation that y is already by itself, this is a perfect substitution problem. Because all I have to do is say, okay, y in equation b is the same thing as 8x minus 1. So if I go to equation a, I can substitute in 8x minus 1 in for y. So now when I rewrite equation a, when I rewrite equation A, I can substitute in 8x minus 1, as you notice. I just did that in 4y. I just substituted it in. I can now distribute. And when I distribute, I get negative 16x plus, there's 16x minus 2 equals negative 2. You notice my variables suddenly vanish. They disappear. Okay, now remember, in my previous slide, I said when variables disappear... That means that you are either going to have a true statement or a false statement. If the variables disappear and you get a true statement, you have infinitely many solutions. If you get a false statement, there's no solutions. Okay? I'm getting a true statement because, as you notice, I'm left with negative 2 equals negative 2. That means I have infinitely many solutions. That means there's infinitely many correct responses that I can get for these. Now, what, I, what this doesn't tell me and what we'll learn in, in an upcoming section is what would be the correct solutions, uh, the correct solution set for this. All I know is that there are infinitely many values that will work for both of these. It doesn't tell me what they are. Like, I can't just pick anything I want, okay? Infinitely many solution is different from all real numbers. All real numbers mean I can plug anything in I want, okay? That's not what's going on here. What's going on here is that these are the same lines, and there's infinitely many solutions that will make them both true, okay? We and I think I've said enough about that, all right? Let's do one more. Let's jump into 26. Now, 26, they give you these directions. Without solving the system, 
Okay, that means I don't want you to graph it. I don't want you to use substitution or elimination. I want you to tell whether this system has one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions. So remember, we talked about how to do that right here when we talked about putting each equation in slope intercept form and determining do they have different slopes or do they have the same slopes and sa same y intercepts. So that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go to number 26. I'm not going to solve it by using substitution, elimination, or graphing. I'm going to start off here and say, okay, look at this first equation. The slope is negative 6. Let's see what the slope of the other equation is. So I'll call this equation A and I'll call this equation B. Equation A has a slope of negative 6. I just need to find the slope of equation B and see how it compares. So I'm going to do that. I, I got to solve equation B. I got to solve equation B for Y. I got to get Y by itself. So I'll take away 12X. I'll now divide by 2. And I'm getting Y equals negative 3 minus 6X, which is the same thing as Y equals negative 6X minus 3. So as I notice, here's the first thing I notice. These both have the same slope. That means one of two things. That means they either have no solution or infinitely many. I got to look at the y intercepts. The y intercepts are different. That means these are two different lines that are parallel. And since they're two different lines that are parallel, that means we have no solution in this case. Okay? And, and again, the reason we have two different lines that are parallel. And I know they're different because they have a different y-intercept. They're not crossing at the same point, so they're just parallel. Lines that are parallel, okay? And that's how we can tell if this has one solution, no solution, or infinitely many solutions without even solving, okay? I think I'm going to stop my video there. If we need to go over more examples, we can in class tomorrow. I don't want to make the video too long. It's already it's 12 minutes right now, okay? So again, they're going to have you do a few different things here. They'll have you in today's homework. They'll have you solve the system using substitution or elimination. See if you get one answer, no solution or infinitely many. In 26 to 31, you can see now that, like I did here, they're having us figure out is this system having one solution, no solution, or infinitely many without even solving it. Okay. So I'll stop here again. If we have any questions, we can go through that in class tomorrow.